my wife and I both grew up on traditional uh, small beef cattle farms where you basically graze the cattle all summer and then feed hay all winter. All of that hay we made ourselves. When we started our operation uh, here in Roxboro, we could either be in the cow business or the equipment business. So we chose to buy, to buy cows. In this country, most of our beef cattle producers are, have 25 or 30 head of cattle or less, and not many of them, in fact almost none of them, can control their income from cattle. But they can do a lot to control their expenses. That anything they can do to affect that cost of feed will have a significant impact. I was actually feeding hay by the 1st of November. I was running out of grass totally by the middle of December or the 1st of January. My name is Brad Story. I live in Hamptonville, North Carolina. And I'm primarily a, a beef cattle hay producer. When I came out to feed hay, I would bring two or three rolls of hay out with a tractor. And the year before, I, I, I really don't know how many rolls I'd fed, but somewhere in the neighborhood probably of 100, 125 rolls. It's just very, very difficult in our region to make quality hay. It's just, it's very hard to do, uh, both from a, a harvest, you know, and baling standpoint, all the way to proper storage. We just have so much humidity and heat and inopportune rain or intermittent rain or lack of rain. Hay is getting more and more expensive, especially with fuel prices and the twine and everything else, not to mention the wear and tear on your equipment. I had to look for other options because of the economic factors. Feed cost on a beef cattle farm is usually controlled through the management of pasture. Okay, we can't grow grass in the middle of the winter when the temperature is below 40 degrees or so, uh, but we can accumulate growth previous to that season, accumulated in the field, sometimes it's called stockpiling. When the grazing season on the rest of the farm is completed, we can move animals into that stockpile or accumulated growth and ration it out in a reasonable way to extend the season that animals are actually getting their feed from the pasture. I try to stockpile for the winter time so I don't have to feed hay. But I usually try to get the cattle off of that land by the beginning of August and usually start rotational grazing, strip grazing that in November and right on through until February and then move them back to the other pastures that I didn't have stockpile once they start growing and producing in the spring. Well, I've lived on a farm my whole life. Uh, my parents had a farm in New Jersey. My mom has been in farming her whole life. Just enjoy it and like, uh, like being outside working on a farm. Right now I'm running about 85 head. It's about 40, about 40 cows and about 45 calves. I'm looking to eventually get, try about 100 head uh, on this grazing program. Stockpiling forages and strip grazing livestock in the winter, it's not really a new idea, but it's getting a lot of renewed interest because of increased energy prices. So a lot of people are taking renewed interest in this practice. Probably the bottom line is they all want to make their operation a little bit better and they all want to make money and save on their energy cost. Okay, here's a uh, section of a pasture that we're going to utilize for stockpiling this winter. For the most part, this is the type of pasture we like. Uh, quite a bit of, uh, of uh, a mixture of warm season and uh, cool season grasses and it should stockpile very well. When you're planning a stockpiling program or looking at a stockpiling program, you need to think a little bit about your cattle. What are their nutrient requirements going to be through the winter time? Do you have the type of forage that stockpiles very well that will give you ample fall growth 
and that will weather very well through the uh, wet, possibly cold, icy, snowy winters that we may have here in this area. It's the middle of August right now, and I've set aside about 60 acres of land that I'm not going to have the cattle on until November. I'm trying to look for around maybe 3,000 pounds of grass to 5,000 pounds of grass per acre. I hope that I'll go through the first of March, uh, just like I did last year, and possibly even have more residual grass left. And I want to try to leave at least, uh, you know, a good two inches to uh, help the grass grow back quicker. Usually in our system, it's sometime around uh, late November, early December. We'll just start at the water source uh, with the cattle and then we'll start strip grazing. We started the strip grazing, the rotational grazing, in the far paddock, and, and I moved the fence every day, equivalent of about 30 feet, and, I, and then the whole distance across the paddock. And they had fresh green grass, and the cows got so accustomed to it that they would be standing lined up waiting for me to move the fence each day. When I walk to that gate, they know exactly what's coming. They're going to get lush green grass, and they love it. We tested the grass for the uh, food value as well as the hay. My hay tested out about 7% protein. Uh, the grass is testing at about 14 to 15% protein. It's what the cows want. One of the reasons we like stockpiling is from a nutritional standpoint, uh, it's just simply better than hay. If you do a side-by-side -side nutritional analysis, you'll see on what, just about whatever uh, components you want to look at, uh, crude protein, uh, digestible energy. The stockpile forage is going to have an advantage over dry hay. But the labor involved in, in stockpiling, uh, a lot of people say that's just too much work. I say it's too much work to put up hay all summer and then feed hay all winter. We use a four-wheeler. It's really enjoyable thing to do to go out and work with the cattle, you know, see the cattle uh, and not have to get out on a tractor. Help me keep my cost down as far as fertilizer and uh, the diesel. With diesel at almost four dollars a gallon right now, uh, I'm not using any uh, in my tractors in the winter time, and I'm sure I'll have to do some fertilizing. But with the distribution of the manure, I think I'm saving on fertilizer also, which is uh, very expensive. I think one of the benefits that probably doesn't get talked about enough with uh, you know grazing stockpile forage is the distribution of the manure. We all understand that uh, fertilizer, regardless of the source, is extremely expensive right now. You really want those nutrients to stay in your pasture where they can be utilized and we really get a nice manure distribution uh, with our cattle when we use strip grazing. Because we're generally rationing out the pasture in very small strips, you've got a high density of animals on a very small area. Their manure and urine is more uniformly distributed and as you move across the pasture, they pretty much move that distribution of manure and urine across that pasture, getting good utilization of the forage and good distribution of nutrients. It's something that doesn't take a lot of time. 
and just offers a huge benefit. With some minimal investment in uh, step-in post, poly wire, and some geared reels, uh, you can set up uh, your paddocks on a weekend and just uh, take them down each day or every couple of days, whatever suits your management style. It would save you time if you get, got set up and prepared. Uh, total time walking from the house out here, moving the fence and then going back 30 minutes. And that's about the same time, if not actually a little shorter than it would take me when I was putting two and three rolls of hay out here a couple of winters ago. It's 16th of February, we're almost at the end of winter. We can see some grass greening up now and I have enough grass in this pasture to continue probably till the end of February, maybe the end of the first week of March. Uh, I will have grazed this pasture for three months with no hay. I haven't even cranked my tractor to move roll the hay except uh, when I had a neighbor come wanting to buy some of the hay that I had left over. I've probably got 12 inches of, of grass right here. There was no need to bale and put it in the barn and spend the time bailing and the diesel fuel bailing and then the money to put in the barn and then the time to get it back out of the barn and bring back out here and either you know roll the round bales out for the cows and it's it's much easier for me and much more economical for me just to leave it in the field and let the cows eat it. I started off with probably around 60 acres of stockpiled grass. I still have about 30 acres so I'm only about halfway through my stockpile which will last me right through the rest of February, March, and April. You've got these producers in these different geographical locations throughout the state. A lot of the, a lot of the neighbors, a lot of the other producers nearby are taking note of what these guys are doing, and they're seeing the benefits them, themselves, all the energy savings, the less waste, being able to distribute nutrients on their farm, being able to reuse and recycle nitrogen and phosphorus. When I first started this, program I was afraid that maybe the cattle would would not winter as good and maybe drop a body score but I have I've had no problems and some of them even look better to me after the grazing than they did before I started in the winter time. When the snow was on the ground we had uh, about four inches of snow and then it iced it, it came a, a big sleet storm on top of it I was worried I didn't think they would be able to dig through it but they would scratch with their feet they would paw with their feet and take their noses and actually break that ice crust on top to get to the green grass every time I moved the fence they were right there breaking that crust until it melted it's, it's what cows love green grass and and my cows are in probably as good a shape as I've ever had them coming out of winter at this point in time We probably got a couple of more weeks left uh, in our uh, stockpile grazing for this winter. Uh, it's been a great season so far, uh, and uh, the stockpile's held up really well, and the cows have uh, come through in excellent condition. Some of the original research on stockpile or accumulated growth of cool season grasses started back in the 60s. So we've known for many, many years that we could accumulate a lot of growth in the fall. We knew that it would maintain its quality into the winter. We knew we could ration it out and utilize 75 or more percent of what was there. So we've known it a long time, but now with the price of fuel, the price of labor, or just having time to do it, I think a lot more people are starting to think about the advantages of this system. Too many people have gotten in the mindset that have cattle that they have to feed hay. They have to take that roll of hay out there or they're not doing their cattle justice. But you can see these cows would much rather have that green grass than to have hay. The hay that I have made, I'm not gonna make in the future because I've seen that this system works. If you, you try this system, I can't help but believe that you're gonna like it. I believe you would see that it would be a great saving but I, the mu biggest thing is, it's going to be a big improvement for your pasture and the cattle.
I will continue to do this grazing system in the future as long as I have cattle on this property.